everyone and welcome. This is Melissa Armo with the Stock Swoosh and I'm going to review one entire month of trades, newsletter trades, options trades from the Gap Options newsletter. This is from the month of June and this took me a while to put this together but I've gotten so many questions. What can you expect on the letter? How many trades? How many winners? How many losers? What return on investment? Uh, and, you know, are there a lot of trades in a week or a month? And so I thought this would be a good idea, particularly because we're getting into the end of the summer, beginning of fall period for earning season. So earning season starts in about three weeks. When earning season starts, we have a lot of trades. We have a lot of gaps and we usually have a very active season. The month of June and why I picked this particular month was um, towards the end, okay, of the second quarter earning season. So there's four quarterly earning seasons in a year. So this was not an overly busy month is the point, okay? So this is probably an average to slower month. I may call more trades on a busy month. For example, in the month of October and November will be busy months when we have a lot of gaps and there will be a lot of earnings trades. I do gaps for news. I do gaps for earnings. I do gaps with the market. Um, we'll go over these here. I did not put the charts in this presentation. You can look up the charts yourself. So I have every single letter, the timestamp, the letter when it was sent out, and then the trade. And again, the trades are emailed to you in live time. I do not have a monthly subscription to the newsletter or a quarterly subscription to the newsletter. I have only an annual subscription to the newsletter. It works because you never know how many trades you're going to get in a week or a month. So you really have to be committed to being on the letter for the entire year. Uh, I think people get the benefit out of it by deciding how many trades they're going to take per day and per week and assessing their risk accordingly based on their level of experience trading options and the size of their account, okay? So this is an advanced trader risk that we're gonna go over here. Again, I've been trading since the end of 2008, so almost 13 years. If you are new, and you have a small account, you should be risking a beginner amount. You can take options with a cash account. You can open up an account trading options at any retail broker with as little as $2,000. Your risk has to be assized accordingly. You can take one contract. Your risk should be close to equal or similar to equal in every trade you take. Will that mean that you cannot do some of these trades? Yes, some of the ones are very expensive. If you have a small account, you can't do. But again, I'm calling plenty of trades in a week and a month for you to benefit from the calls on the newsletter, okay? So this is a whole month. And we're going to go over all the trades. If you have questions, get you my information here. Oh, there's me and Steve Forbes. Haven't been to Fox Studios in a while. Let's see if they get people back in 2022 for live live hits. If you have questions, you can email me at melissa at the stockswoosh.com. You can call me at 99 gap You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. Okay, and if you want to sign up for the Gap Options newsletter, again, go to my website, www.thestockswish.com. The newsletter is $69.99 a year, and you can sign up at any time. As soon as you sign up, you'll start receiving the newsletters. Again, it's on an annual basis. So if you sign up, you know, October 1st, you'll be paid through into 2022, October 1st. So everything that I do is based on one strategy, but it's based on gaps. I make money using one strategy in the market. I'm telling you, that's the way to do it. If you want to do this and you want to make money, you have to be consistent with what you do. And I find that the focus that I get from rating my gaps each and every single solitary day really helps me stay consistent with my trading. Too many people are doing too many different strategies and they're all over the place and they're changing their mind every different day. And also, a lot of people are trading and don't even have a strategy. Not only do they think they have a strategy, they're doing something, but it's really not a strategy. It's what I call a setup or a play. I'll go into that in detail in another lecture. But people are trading without strategies, and they're all over the place doing different ones, and they never consequently get good at any one strategy. I'm good at gaps because this is all I do. And I coined my uh, strategy and called it golden gaps because it's like finding gold in the market. 
you will not learn my system by signing up for the newsletter. If you want to learn the system, you have to sign up for the class. I teach the class once a month, but I do think taking the class helps you with the letter. There's no prerequisites though for the newsletter. So if you just want to sign up for the newsletter for one year, receive all the newsletters, boom. There's no prerequisites, you don't have to do the class. I think the class helps you though, okay? So that's my two cents on that. Any education helps you, in my opinion. So for the month of June, we had a 68% win ratio <clears throat> for the trades. There were 21 winners, zero break-evens, 10 losers, and 31 trades. Average risk per trade, this is an advanced trader risk, which we're going to go over here today, was $8,000. Total profits, $189,075 for the month. And average return on investment was 100%, which is good. If you have time to watch the trades, I do have the targets in the letter. If you do not, I would just buy the uh, call or put or whatever I'm calling in that particular day and I will put a sell order at 50% or you can put a sell order at 100%. But if you can't watch it, I really would put a sell order at 50% to make sure you get out because 50% is a good profit, okay? And not every trade will go to 100%. So if you have time to watch it though for targets, I would. That's my two cents. Again, some people are doing this part-time and they're doing other jobs. Some people are trading full-time. It's up to you. But the targets are included on the letter. So we're going to go over each and every trade. Uh, this was from Tony. You know, people are making money in the letter. Again, I don't think it's that difficult because you're following momentum. I'm very specific in the letter, which you'll see. You've got to take profits. And you do it. And we have more winners than losers, which is important. That's how you make money. And again, a 68% win ratio is pretty good. So this was the first week of June, an expiration date of 6-4. I called Amazon expiring 6-4. It was calls. The 3,300 calls. Uh, this was back 526, expired again June 4th. This trade did not work. Now, again, how do I play every trade? I play them to win or lose. So like if I call a trade on a Monday to expire on a Friday and it's down the first day, I don't kill it before Monday, before four o'clock, I don't do that. So I give trades a chance to work, that's me. Some people kill them if they're down 50%. Some people kill them if they're down the same day. I call it and it doesn't go. I don't do that, okay, just so you know. So I'll let it just run out and sometimes trades work, okay, even the last day. So just because somebody doesn't go immediately doesn't mean it's not going to work. But in this case here, this Amazon did not work. This Amazon lost. Um, so this was a losing trade back the expiration date, which was June 4th. And just a tip, I would still sell out of your trades at zero, even on the last day we're still in them, just to get in the habit of selling out of everything because um, I think that's important because you don't want to forget to get out of trades that are winners or you're going to end up buying the stock outright in the shares. Again, that's an explanation and a lecture for another time. But I get into a good habit of just selling your trades the last day. Sell it for a penny if you can. Sell it for 10 cents, whatever. I called the spy calls. Again, was bullish here in the market at this point. Uh, 420 calls expired 6-4. I called this 527. This trade had some value left in it for the last day. Was not a total loser, uh, but basically did lose, okay? Cost was three, sold at a buck 50. So saved some out of the cost of it, but ultimately was a losing trade by the end of the day. Did not go, did not work right. This was the 420 spies. Again, you can take one contract, spend $3, which would be 300 bucks. You do not have to take an advanced trader risk. But again, all of your trades should be close to equal or similar to equal in your risk that you take in your trades. NVIDIA, beautiful gap. 527 called the 630 NVIDIAs, expiring 64. These were calls. <laughs> again, a call is a long. You're going long. We went long this bullish gap. Exit was 528. Great trade. Again, you take it one day, you exit it the following day, it blew up. Cost was $8, which was not cheap. Again, one would have cost you $800, but more than paid. Sold at $22, profit $14,000, return on investment 175%. Great trade, went to the targets, surpassed the targets, beautiful trade. And again, this was a bullish gap. This was a call, okay? We do calls and we do puts. 
So I get up in the morning and I'm rating the gap. You do not have to know how to rate the gaps to be on the newsletter. Again, if you wanna do the class to learn the rating system, you do it. It's the Golden Gap course. If you just wanna get the trades in the letter, you sign up for the newsletter. Many people just wanna sign up for the newsletter. They don't have time to do the class on the weekend and they just want the trades. That's 100% up to you. I also stacked these because I love this gap and this rally called the 650s. This was on Friday the 28th, expiration date 64. This continue, okay? Cost was six, sold at 11, profit 6,000, risking 7,200, return on investment 83%, nice trade. I just wanna go back here to show you the time of these actually. You see, this was Friday morning about 10, 15, but this previous one here was right before the open, 925. So most of the time I will call trades, I'd say a majority of the trades are called in the pre-market before the open. Could be eight o'clock in the morning, could be 915, 920 before the open, but usually pretty early, okay? Now, sometimes I will call later trades if you call 1015 late, but that's what happened here, okay? So just letting you know, the morning is the time to be focused to do the trades and get in the trades. Very important time. Gotta be at your desk. You see here, this Ulta was called at 837. This was a call, 345 calls again, expired the fourth. This Ulta did not work. It just never went right. This will cost $9, eight contracts, risk was 7,200. Again, let it ride out, did not play out. You could have killed this at 50% loss, but I ride them out to see where they go, and this just did not go right. <coughs> so Ulta did not work. We'll see where that does this next earning season. Did another call on the SPY for the follow through here, 425, called it on 6-1, expired 6-4. I'm usually doing the weeklies, just so you know. <clears throat> in this case here, it did not work this time either. So this just was stubborn. Again, this was June, despite the fact the market's been bullish. We just didn't have the follow through around this particular week in the market. So this lost, this was from Monday, I think it was Monday or Tuesday to the to the Friday. Okay. Yeah, that was the Memorial Day weekend. That was Tuesday, but it felt like a Monday because it was the day after the holiday. Then we did 611 the next week. Okay, again, I'm doing the weeklies. So 62, I called the Apple 125 calls. Beautiful move. Okay. Exit 6-4, it did it. Again, look at this thing. To do something and then take it and get the move, I'd say 24 to 48 hours. So the call this 6-2, exit 6-4, and the expiration date was June 11th, but I actually could have, ironically, I could have called this with an expiration date of June 4th. It would have been a little bit tight. I try to give slight cushion with time with options, but this was still a pretty cheap price at a buck 50 for one contract for a week and a half out. So 60 contracts, risk was 7,500, sold at two, profit $4,500, return on investment 60%. That's a good trade. Remember for every trade, if you wanna hold something, and you could have held the NVIDIA, some of those NVIDIAs longer, you, you're, you're not booking the profits, and then also you're holding up your money that you're using in the trade to hold onto the trade to take the trade. So if you book the profits, one of the profits, you've guaranteed the profits when you book it. Once you book a trade that you're up, you can't lose in it. And then obviously you have the money back in your account to take another trade. So I think that that is something that people have to be aware of too. Remember we're trading, we're chunking it out. Chunk it, chunk it, chunk it. But this was a nice trade and I could have called the timing tighter. Really, and, it, and, it, and what would have mattered, it would have been cheaper. So they, it would have been less than about 25 um, at that point, okay? Did another NVIDIA, Wednesday the 2nd, 670s. This just flew for the following week since 11, but again, took it, got out, boom, got the momentum, got the move. Cost was $10, eight contracts, risk was 8,000, sold at 38. Profit 22,400, return on investment 280%. A fabulous, fabulous trade. Again, any trade that goes and blows through 100% is 
is a just a phenomenal trade and we have trades like that i'm good enough at what i do to call trades like that your expectation is not that every trade is going to go like that but we absolutely do have huge trades again that's my experience and my ability to be able to see the momentum that's going to come into something once i see the gap and rate the gap and the quality of the gap and how high the gap rates that i can determine if it's a really good trade and again sometimes i will do what we did with this one well i will just stay on top of it stay on top of it and and do different strikes in it okay which is exactly what we did with this nvidia and we did another one too <laughs> so this was the same day i think hold on yeah six two called the 665s again worked expired 611 six contracts cost 13 dollars risk 7800 sold at 42 profit 17,400 return on investment 223 percent this is again why i think it's important to determine how much money do you want to allot to each day and each week um you may not want to do more than one nvidia you may not want to be in more than one trade at a time or you might want to be in two or three or four as many as a call depending on the cash that you have to to risk but this was just such a nice gap and i think everybody just piled on in this because because we had even done this the previous week. But this really ran up. Huge trade. Again, you could have taken one contract and still made over 200%. It would have cost you $1,300 for one contract, which is reasonable. And then I also called the 675 Nivinias. It expired the same day. But again, had the move. Take it, book it, get out, get the momentum. Cost was ten dollars. Eight contracts. Risk was eight thousand. Sold at thirty-five. Profit was twenty thousand dollars. Return on investment two hundred and fifty percent. What a nice trade. Okay. Again, to 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 get these kinds of gaps. And remember, this was the end of earnings season. So we're definitely going to get trades like this in October and November in the thick of earnings season. I mean, they're there. You just got to look for them in the market. You've got to find a spot and and the gap. And then we did the 700 NVIDIAs. Again, it ran up. I mean, this really was phenomenal. Uh, a 611 expiration, cost was $4, 20 contracts, risk was 8,000, sold at 18, profit 28,000, return investment 350%. Now, why was this one so much bigger return on investment than the previous strikes? Why? Because on this particular day, again, Time of the day I called this one was really early, 9.56, okay? Early in, it was far away from the strike. Now, while $4 may not seem cheap to you, again, one contract is $400. It really kind of was in Divinia, but this was so far away. In fact, I don't have this chart in here. Let me just pull this chart up here to show you. That's one of the reasons this is, was one, we were in early, and two, Again, this is my ability to be able to just read price actions so well. Oh, you're not going to see it right because the stock split. Shoot. Gosh darn it. Now, it's not right now because this stock split since then, so none of the numbers are going to make any sense. But the reality is it was far away from 700 when I called this. Oh, oops, on this day. That's why the return on investment was so much bigger for this particular trade. Called it early, far away from the strike, ran up big. Profit 28,000, risking 8,000. Anyways, the stock has split, so the price of NVIDIA now is not gonna make any sense with this to show the chart. I wish I had kept, kept some charts of this. Maybe I have them somewhere. So that was a nice trade. And then later on that morning, I called the 720s. Of course, it worked too. Cost of this is 290. 25 contracts were 7250. Sold at 950. Profit 16,500. Again, stacking the trades away from the strikes. And you can do this if you're on the letter and I call something and you think the first one's too expensive, which were close to the strike, do one far away. If one's going to work, they're all going to run out. Do you know what I'm saying? It, something can be profitable even if it doesn't go to the strike or through the strike if you're getting the direction right and the timing, and that's what matters. Profit was 16,500 in this, return on investment 228%. Again, these trades were called on June 2nd, exited June 4th, but the expiration date was June 11th, okay? 
Again, that was far away from the strike, too. Then on June 11th, this week, Tuesday, 6 8, called Amazon 3300s, went after this again. Again, it was calls. Exited on 610. This trade worked. So you see, I did the one. It lost. I stayed on top of this Amazon. Cost was $12, seven contracts. Risk was 8400 Sold at 48, profit $25,200. Return on investment 300%. Amazon isn't cheap, I will say that, but this this particular one for $12, that is cheap for Amazon. I gotta be honest with you. But again, it ran up. This was a call, it was a long, called it on one day, exited the other day, right before the expiration, nice trade. So it was from a Tuesday to a Thursday. And 300%, again, you will get trades like this with me in the letter. I'm that good at calling directional bias in stocks and also seeing where something can go even as far away. Because that was cheap for Amazon. Apple, the 128s expired, 611, again calls. We did a lot of calls this month. This wasn't a total bust, but it was a partial loss. Cost 110, sold at 60 cents. Saved some on this, just didn't go right, wasn't going to go there, didn't work. So this was a loser, albeit not a full loser. Spy 424 calls, again called with an expiration date of June 11th, called on the 8th. This was a partial loser. 80 cents, sold it, 2400 was the loss. Okay, this did not work. Save some out of this. Then on Tuesday the 8th, I called the 338 QQQ calls. This was a small profit on the very, very, very last day. It's, it's interesting because it would have been up a lot more if I'd taken it out to the following week. But then sometimes I just don't want to pay for that. Cost was two forty, dollars sold at three, made $1,800, 25% return on investment the very last day, which isn't bad. So this, this worked, but it was just a little bit too much for the last day, squeezing it out. This would have been a bigger return on investment if I'd done it out for the next week, but I would have paid up more for it. But it worked. It was a winner. June 18th, expiration, stitch fix. This is out tonight. We'll see where this goes tonight. Strike was 70 calls, June 18th. This did not work at all. It just was a bust. It never really went, went right. Again, I play things out to give them a chance, but this just kind of flopped. Flop, flop, flopped. Really could have done it for the 11th because it flopped. Called it on the 8th. I gave that time. It, it just didn't even matter. Time did not matter for this, and very often it doesn't. You know, we're, we're, we're trading momentum. They've got to go if they're going to go or they're just not going to go. So why even give them the more time? Do you know what I'm saying? That's kind of my attitude about these things. RH, 670 strike. This is calls expiring on the 18th. This didn't work. This lost. You could have saved something out of it. But the bottom line is it just failed. Um, exited on with a partial, partial loss on the 18th, the very last day. But it didn't work right. Tesla, 615 strike, expired June 18th. Again, called this Thursday the following Friday. This was calls too. Uh, this, again, was cheap for Tesla, to be honest with you. Cost was 14, sold at 13. It was pretty much almost a break even. Just lost 500 bucks. Wish it would have worked, but it didn't. But sometimes things, again, go in your right direction, but what you pay for them, they squeeze it out too late. You can see here, it was for the carryover from the previous week, from Thursday to the following Friday. And even though it moved the right direction, it just eked out and didn't go. Microsoft 257.50s expired 618 calls. This was on Thursday the 10th. This trade worked. It was 44% return on investment. Cost was 225, sold at 325, profit was 3,500. This is a little trade. Some trades are just trades. You take it, you book it, you get out. You take it, you book it, get out. Okay. It has the move, boom, you take it, get out. There's nothing wrong with that. Some people get out of everything the same day if they go green. I Again, I don't do that, but you could, theoretically. NVIDIA 705s, we did this again. Expiring June 18th, and guess what? It worked. Cost was $12. Risk was $8,400 and seven contracts. Profit was $5,600. A return on investment of 67%. And again, this was a quick in and out. Expired the 18th. Exited the 14th. Okay. 
Apple, the 129 calls, went after this one again. This was a nice trade immediately, but very cheap. 80 cents, sold for two. Everyone likes the ones that go the same day I call them. I get it. And especially everybody likes the ones that are big. Return on investment in this was 150%. You took it the same day, got out the same day. Boom, boom. A fabulous, fabulous, fabulous trade. Everyone loves these. The QQQ 342 calls, June 18th expiration, 225 cost, 35 contracts, risk was 78.75, sold at 360, profit 47.25, return on investment 60%. Nice trade. Again, get in, get out, get in, get out. You could have taken this on the 14th and got out on the 14th again that was combined with Apple. Okay, the move up. So the next following week was the expiration of 625. We did the videos again, 720s. Expired June 25th, this was calls. Cost was $12. Again, that was a good price for NVIDIA. Sold at 37, profit 15,000, return on investment 208%. Took it the one day, got out the next day. Took it, got out the next day. 24 hours is good. Again, this was called early, 947 on the Wednesday. Okay, but didn't expire the following week, but ran up the following day. Nice trade. Huge. I mean, this just was a really nice move. I wish I could show you the chart before it split. Spy 417, we did a put. Expired June 25th. Didn't work. So started shorting the market around here then. This was a difficult time in that month of June. We weren't getting followed through with longs in the market, and we weren't getting followed through the shorts in the market but we had a gap down here, it didn't go through right. Apple of 135s, did a call expiring July 2nd, nice trade again in Apple. Stacked it, called it on the 22nd, exited on the 23rd, cost was cheap, 70 cents, sold at 140, profit $7,000, return investment 100%. You could again, just set your order. You can watch the targets, but you can just set your order too if you want to less stressful for you if you really don't want to worry about watching it or even if you just can't watch it you know you don't have the time to watch it okay 24-hour trade then we did tesla which can move pretty big too called on the 23rd exit 24 strike was 640 expired 72 this was $23 for one, risk 6,900, sold at 60, profit 11,100, return on investment 161%, a great trade. Tesla can really move. These aren't cheap, but it can move people. Fabulous. And to have a move like that quick is good, because again, this didn't expire to July. Then the expiration date of July 2nd, we did a video again. Strike was 770, expired on the second calls, of course. Cost was $18, risk $7,200 for an advanced trader risk, sold at $33, profit $6,000, return on investment 83%. Again, you could have done one and spent $1,800 and made money. So again, you can take one contract, but your risk should be the same or close to the same on every trade you take. I wouldn't say this was a fast trade. Well, I mean, you would have taken on a Thursday and would have got out the following week. It was still before July. Then we did Microsoft 270s, expired July 2nd, cheap, buck 30, sold at 260. Again, just put the order in to sell you at 100% if you don't have time to watch it. Called in 624, ran up, and again, why I don't kill things? I give things a chance to work because this was called 944 on the Thursday and didn't run up to when? 629. Plenty of time, plenty of time to go, okay? Then we did the 430 calls in the SPY. This finally went dirt cheap, 55 cents. Really, really cheap for the market. Sold at 95 cents, profit 6,000. 73% return investment. I get this question a lot. We do things that are liquid. I like to do liquid options, liquid stocks. I like to day trade liquid stocks. We don't do anything that's low volume. Tesla 700 calls, a lot of calls in here. Took it on the 24th, eggs on the 25th. $12 cost, sold at 21, 75% return on investment, profit 5,400. Again, Tesla is fun to trade. And you wanna get big moves in that because the stock should move big in that based on the cost. 
It's great to trade stocks in this price point and not have to worry about margin. That's the benefit of doing options. You do not have to have buying power for something that costs $700 or even Amazon that costs over $3,000. You can take something and spend $1,200. That's a $700 stock. This is a benefit of trading options. You can trade options with a small account and not have to worry about margin. So I get up in the morning, process of the gap, rate it, rate them, get organized, rate the gap using the golden gap checklist. That's what I do, okay? So I am rating the gaps for the newsletter participants. Then I send out the trades. My focus every single day is to make money. That's my number one focus, that is what I do. It's one of the reasons it's good to trade with me because I like to be right, I like to make money. If you want to take the class, you could sign up for the newsletter, take the class later. I have a lot of people that have done that. They say, I wanna learn more. I know the system works now. I'm doing it, I'm making money in the letter. I think it's time for me to take the class. But you achieve your goals by chunking it out. You can easily make back the cost of the course in just a few trades if you follow along. You can see this here. However, the larger benefit is truly learning the system so that you can use it for the rest of your life. What if I stop the newsletter one day? So, you know, it's important to learn the system or really think. Don't forget your longer term goals. So many traders get caught up in the past. Live in the present moment and keep your eye in the future. You want to sign up for the newsletter? Do it. Start doing well, do well, make money, and then sign up for the class so you can learn it to prove yourself that this is something that you really want to do. If trading for a living is something you want to do, you have to find a way to make it work in your schedule. The class is always on the weekends. Okay. You could be in another job and do something else and get the options trades because they're in live time get sent to you on an email in the newsletter. So you figure out a way to make it work for you that you can make a transition for yourself. Everyone wants to make money, but not every trade is going to work. You saw that here. Again, you can have an amazing result and a profitable month at even a 68% win ratio. Okay? You have to size yourself correctly. Financial freedom is important to people, not just because of the world that we're living in now, but I think this is something that as people become more evolved, they realize, again, they want to work from home. They don't want to be relied on an employer. Look at what's happening with the vaccine mandates right now. So there's a lot of reasons people want financial freedom. You can make money from home. You can trade from home. If you'd like to learn the system, it's called the Golden Gap System, the Golden Gap Course. The Golden Gap System is a 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of this system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. This checklist tells you what to trade, when, and in what direction. The 26-point checklist predicts directional bias in a stock. And that's what I do. So if you want to learn the system, you can take the class. If you just want to be on the newsletter, you can sign up for the newsletter as is. So I go through the checklist each morning. I do all of this in the pre-market. If you want to learn the system, you take the Golden Gap course. Next class is September 25th and 26th. Class tuition is $6,999. It's 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. If you want to sign up for the Trends course, the combo with the Golden Gap, this is on the 28th, Tuesday, okay? You save $500 through the trends, learn long-term trends, which is good for swing trading and options. If you want to just sign up for the Gap Options newsletter, it's an 